how to prevent uh, breast cancer? Unfortunately, we don't know how. Because if we know the cause of cancer, we could have prevented it from the beginning. But because we don't know until now, despite all the researches, we know that there are risk factors that make this lady at risk more than the other lady. But still, we don't know exactly what is the reason for having cancer. But what is available now is the early detection. Mm -hmm. And this is why we encourage women to do breast self-examination, go to, doc to the doctor for clinical breast examination, and to do the mammogram from the age of 40 yearly. Because we want to detect the mass or the lump or the tumor when it is still in the early stage. It's small and tiny before it becomes advanced. This is the tool or the available tool for prevention, I mean, early, early detection. I mean, early detection, like you say, in most diseases, if right. not all, if you Absolutely. follow this procedure, it will prevent really a serious uh, and severe problems I mean, Absolutely. In, in the future now. Severe, uh, it will prevent health problems, financial problems, because when you treat something in the early Critical, stage, uh, Exactly. exactly. Even for the Ministry of Health and the governments, when you do a national, when you have a national program for early detection, you could save your country a lot of cost because the treatment of advanced stages it costs the government or the Ministry of Health many times more than early detection tools. And I think it's mostly like I'm not a doctor, but it's like um, lifestyle maybe somehow. This like is diabetic, one of the I mean now. Um, uh, you can see now a huge number of people have diabetics and uh, high uh, uh, temperature like this. So I think this is like uh, lifestyle. It is. It is a lot of uh, the uh, major health problems in our region is because of the uh, the lifestyle, the food uh, yeah. habit, the exercise, all these things. How can we raise the public awareness about this issue? Well, I believe that uh, life examples are the best. When somebody with breast cancer, they break the silence, they come to the front line, they talk about their stories, this encourages the woman. Campaigns and bringing life examples because... Life example. yeah, story. Exactly. When you have a patient uh, or somebody who got the disease and talks, it encourages the others, first of all, to see that uh, people do survive and uh, they, they are mothers, they are working women, and it's not a sentence of death, and it encouraged them to go and have checkup because there's a lot of misconceptions about breast cancer, so they don't want to go for the early detection because they are afraid that, well, it's like a sentence of death, they were, there is no cure, no treatment, and they prefer not to know, uh, so you know, the, it's part of denial. They don't want to know so that they don't have to go for all this um, uh, therapy, which they think that sometimes they believe that even the therapy by itself, like the chemotherapy, is the one which is killing the, the, the woman or the patient. And these are the kind of misconceptions by doing campaigns, increasing the awareness, using the religious people, because this is an extremely important part. Cultures like Saudi Arabia, which is a religious culture and community, they will listen to the um, Islamic rules uh, for management, treatment, seeking health uh, management from the religious leaders better than physicians. When they tell them that it's a, a sin and there is, um, you cannot neglect your health, it's platform, a must. Yeah. This is a very strong platform. Yeah. At the same time, the media, and I believe that media could uh, change the face of any any case <laughs> in the world. And you know this as well as I know, you are the expert here. Really, social media, media, the, um, I mean, TV, newspapers, videos like this, this is the, the, the strongest tool for outreach. Because I always keep saying that women might be in rural area where they do not write or read or go to see the internet. But definitely they listen to the radio and they watch TV. Uh, they have TV in their kitchen. I see. So YouTube, TV, videos, all these tools are excellent tools for outreach. Okay, I need please to convey, uh, Dr. Samia, I need two messages. One message conveyed to non-Saudis, okay. expatriate, and the other message in general. We, as Muslim, know that for health issues in particular, uh, there is 
nothing called Saudi and non-Saudi. And this is why even for screening in our center, we accept Saudis and non-Saudi because this is a health issue. Excellent. In health, it's different than in any other field. Uh, and this is why even the government now, they are providing free treatment for cancer patients only. Uh, we know that they cannot provide treatment in general because of the limited access and there are Saudi who need this. But for cancer, we are aware that it's a major health problem. We are aware that health issues in cancer, they are different. For um, the other message in general, for the women and for men, to understand that uh, there is a lot of changes in breast cancer and in cancer in general. Early detection is the best way if you want to survive and if you want to overcome this problem. It's not a sentence of death. Exactly. And you could see a lot of examples. I'm just one example. I'm a working woman. I'm a mother of two kids. Uh, Alhamdulillah, thanks God, uh, about seven years now as a survivor. So uh, it's not a uh, sentence of death anymore with the technology and the advancement in technology. Misconceptions. And misconceptions, we are trying to fight this misconception. Even now, the United, you know, the Union of International Cancer Control on the Cancer World Day. Last year and the, for the year 2014, the theme will be against the misconceptions because it's not something only in Saudi Arabia, it's everywhere. Okay, Dr. Sam Al-Amoudi, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you for you and for having me and giving me the chance to share with you in this.